Hi everyone and welcome to the Willy Worker Knitting Podcast. Today is not a podcast episode, it's going to be, I think, a quick just episode, a vlog about my day. Today I went to the Tangled Gala Shields Yarn Wool Festival and I had the best time. This time I remembered to try and document things and taking little photos, videos, clips and I'm going to put them all together to give you a little montage of the day and then I will meet you back at the end where I will give you my impressions and show off the yarn that I got and talk about the plans I have for, for them and mention some nice yarn shops that you can access online if you live in the UK uh, or also just vendors to look out for if you ever attend one of those future Scottish wool festivals. If you're not interested in this vlog then that's completely fine, I'll post my usual podcast episodes next Monday so you can follow along to that and yeah I hope that you enjoyed this video then and have a good time relaxing knitting along while I bring out the borders to you. See you later!
Okay, so I am back. It's uh, about 7 p.m. here. We got back. So we left this morning at around, I want to say 8.30. So it's been 10 hours that we've been on the road. We drove to the borders. It was an hour and a half drive. Then basically just attended the event at 10 a.m. when it opened. And we stayed until 2 p.m. And then we just chilled and relaxed in the borders for a couple of hours, went to a restaurant at 4 p.m. and then drove back. So that was the whole day for us. It was fantastic. The weather was amazing. Amazing. I think it's like the hottest it's been in Scotland so far. I could be talking out of my head now, but it was so, so hot. And I, th I think you can tell I've got a bit of a, I've got a bit of a natural glow coming from the, the, the day in the sun. And I was wearing my one and only summer knit. This is the peacock tee uh, you will have seen in the little clips. And I, I'm happy to say that I got uh, three, four different people complimenting me on this t-shirt or asking what it was, what pattern it was. So I'm really happy that it got recognized. And um, it was nice to be wearing something handmade that was also cool. The venue itself, I think, was like ventilated enough like it was really really nice I was worried I was going to be overheating but it was completely fine so that's a good thing to know for future events if they're being held in like July June you'd hope that people would think about like I guess yeah ventilation it's it's kind of hard in the UK it's something that like a lot of places are not fitted with AC just because we don't get that many like hot temperatures so it's really welcome when uh, we get AC Anyway, and then, so it was really sunny, really pretty, just everyone was so happy. We drove there with my partner, but I was told that a lot of people came on the train, like a lot of knitters. The first train got cancelled, so everyone got on the second train, and just the entire coach was filled with knitters. And it must have been really funny, and I always got FOMO for, for not being in that train. But the event was, like plenty overwhelming without starting the day off with such a, a busy train. So it's fine that I wasn't on that train. Uh, I was also happy to be there at the opening at 10 because that meant they were there was less of a chance of things being out of stock. Um, the event was on the Friday and the Saturday and today is Saturday. So that m means that the event was already in its second half. But there was just there was plenty of stock. There wasn't anything that I thought, oh no, I wish that they had more stock of or like I just missed out on. Everything that I wanted was there. And I'd say it was pretty much the same busyness or like as many vendors as there was in Perth, maybe a little bit more this time. And it was much less about um, like the Perth festival I attended in February or March was more about wool and like British wool, natural wool. There was, I think, one or two hand dyers, but this one was very mostly hand dyers with a little bit of natural wools as well and undyed. So there were a couple of vendors that were there in both. For example, Lammermoor wool and Hawkshaw sheep, which I bought things from last time, and also the Border Mill. Uh, they do alpaca rose blends. So those three were here again. And then some people that I had already heard of, there was Ginger Twist Studio, which is a local yarn shop in Edinburgh that I bought things from before. I haven't bought any of their hand dyed, but they do sell commercial yarn, so I had bought some like West Yorkshire Spinner and things from there before. And then also Dystopic Fiber, of which I have some hand dyed sock yarn. Actually, that's some Dystopic Fiber that I already own, so um, I didn't get anything at Dystopic Fiber yet, but it was nice to see all the colors again in person and seeing, for example, they've got a really nice like fade of like browns, like warm browns, and then they had a really nice fade of cold browns. And it was really nice seeing them like next to each other because then it made me realize that I think I, I prefer the, the cold browns. Anyway, so those were the shops I had already heard of before. And then I, I discovered a, a bunch of new vendors and it was so, so great. I feel like that event was so good for being able to like be so social. So I came there with my boyfriend and we were walking together, but yeah, there were lots of knitters that I kind of knew, like my friends. So I said hi to them and we chatted a bit. I struck up some conversations with like other people that I like kind of knew, like or knew their face. Uh, so we just like chat about knitting. I talked to vendors a lot and it was just really nice. Like there's no pressure to buy or anything. It's just like, we both have something in common, yarn, and we can just talk about it. Uh, talk about the patterns, talk about like the dyeing, talking about like trends or colors and it's just so nice to connect on that level and at some point my boyfriend went for a big walk because it was a really lovely day and I was just alone walking about and it, it, would have, it was just 
so nice and friendly that I feel like there would be zero problem coming here on your own if it's something that overwhelms you about going to a yarn festival near you on your own I think you really should go for it and it, it's it's not awkward like lots of people were alone and people wouldn't judge you or look down on you and you could end up meeting some friends or, or meeting some, some people there so I'd highly recommend going to a festival alone or accompanied and I will now talk about some vendors that like I really really crushed on or like had a, a big affinity for their style. What was interesting was that even though there were, I don't know, like 20 different stalls of hand dyers, they were so different. Like a lot of them really had something unique about them that you would know like their style and their vibe. And so that was easy enough to not be too overwhelmed by like everything just looks the same. But I feel like if the event was bigger, if there were 40 vendors, like it's gonna be really hard to, to stand out like that. And maybe as a customer, it would be difficult for you to remember where you saw something that you liked. I recommend just having your phone handy and taking photos of the things that you like so that you, and then maybe like make a note of like where the stall was or what the name of the person was, like take a photo of the um, label of the yarn so that when you're doing your rounds, like if you're coming back again, you know what yarn caught your interest at first. So uh, my first mention that I think deserves like so much praise, it's called Cookstone Crafts. That's her little card. Uh, she's a hand dyer, Claire, based in Aberdeen or Aberdeenshire, just the north of Scotland. And she is amazing. She has an amazing like sense of taste, color, and she was so, so nice. Like we chatted so much. I didn't buy anything because I liked a lot of her colors and I liked a lot of her bases, but I couldn't find like the perfect match of the color on the base. But I think she can do die to order. She said that we could message and like I'll email her later. So I'm keeping an eye on her web shop for future releases. She has an advent calendar. I think she's closing soon though. She's got a monthly subscription box, which I was kind of like quite interested in actually because I feel like advent calendars and subscription boxes, you got to really trust that you like the sense of style, like the dyeing style of that dyer. Like you, you need to know in advance what kind of products you're likely to receive. And I feel like looking at all of her palettes, like I totally trust her that the subscription box, like probably 90%, 80%, I'd be super happy to get. So if I were to do a subscription box, I probably would get hers. Uh, she had like the usual like merino nylon socks, super wash base. She had some alpaca silk, cashmere, some alpaca linen, some alpaca yak. She said that she used to have a bamboo, but she doesn't anymore. She had lots of samples and she makes all of her samples herself, like she told me, which is even more impressive. Like a, a lot of dyers use sample knitters because they just simply don't have the time to knit up that many garments but she has accumulated so many samples over the years that she has made with her own yarn. And it was so great to be able to see not only the color being knitted up, but also the feel of the different bases. And that's the same to say for every other dyer that was bringing samples. Like yarn events are so worth it for the samples alone. It's so, so, so nice to be able to squish not only the yarn, but the garments. So yeah, uh, Cookston Crafts loved it so much. And I didn't buy anything today, but I am so certain that I will. There's a couple colors that I really like, like there's like a blue one and a lilac one. And I just need to make a decision. I've been on a lilac kick lately, but I'm like, I like periwinkle. I think something pastel, something cold like that is what I'm looking for. And I need to find the perfect pattern for it. It was a little hard at first going through all the hand dyed knowing that I was likely to get a fingering weight skein, like, or like skeins, but I can't make that many fingering weight garments in a year. And I don't want to start accumulating too, too much hand dyed fingering because I can't make that many sweaters. So, and I feel like DK, I need to buy like a lot, like four skeins of DK maybe, or four skeins of brushed like alpaca, which is expensive. I'd rather buy two skeins of fingering or three skeins of fingering and be able to make a garment out of that, but it takes more time. So anyway, I'll be thinking and meditating on this purchase and I'll be buying from Cooks and Craft soon. Then the next one that I didn't buy from, but I'm also keeping an eye out for their website is Ripples Crafts. So that's their little uh, business card. And yeah, they had a really, really lovely stall. Um, the bases were like really nicely organized. So it was like little cubicles so that if you would take the yarn of a cube, 
it would so it, everything was ordered by fiber content as opposed to being sorted by color and I was kind of tempted to get some of their DK for a DK weight like sweater but after calculating the yardages I realized that buying three skines was like really cutting it close and I should have bought four and I didn't want to spend that much money I just like would have preferred getting something else somewhere else so I didn't buy any hand eye DK but I was also very attracted to a couple of their fingering weight there was uh it was a yak based merino and yak and silk or something and yak just adds this insane element and dimension of shine and darkness so the depth of color like it just looks like there's something glowing from within it's it's gorgeous and everything was just so bouncy and silky and shiny it was i've not looked basically at any of the merinos like 100 percent merinos or merinos and nylons today i was on an absolute silk cake and like silk yak and linen i was just obsessed with that and it's so so nice to be able to see those fibers being hand dyed because dyes takes up things differently uh no the fibers take up the dyes differently so in that blend it'll be very playful to see how they absorb those colors compared to like superwash merino and it's also why it's so good to see them in person as opposed to a website where it's like die to order because you don't necessarily know what you're going to get if it's on a different base than what the sample was on. I know that this video is going to be all over the place. Like it's not going to be as structured as my usual ones, but I'm just like word vomiting all of my thoughts from the event. And this is a really casual chit chat, like getting all my thoughts out after today, because if I record tomorrow, all the thoughts will have left and I just need to get it out today. So I hope it's not too annoying for you to watch and that you can get some kind of enjoyment in case you wanted to go to the festival but you couldn't. I, I'm, I'm hoping to bring it here. So the next one was called Iolair Yarns. So that's their card here and it's like luxury natural yarns and indeed most of their bases were on some sort of baby alpaca silk cashmere. They had a fingering and a DK base. They also had some iron and then they had a very interesting base that I actually bought something from. So I'll show you that one first. They had little minis like this and as you can see it's extremely drapey and I love that color. Like it's it's a very like olive green but like it's quite shiny from the the yak. So this is a 50% yak, 50% silk, 4 ply, 200 meters, 50 gram. And yeah, I'm going to make a little scarf with this because of the drape. It's going to be like amazing. It's really, really soft as well. And it's quite thin. So I don't think like, I guess a shawl is another thing that people could make with, with those. Like if you get a couple and you make like some color work or stripes, but I don't really wear or make shawls. I thought a, a small scarf, like my Lolu shawl, which I, it's it's called a Lolu shawl, but it's kind of a mini scarf. I would wear those more. So I'll make a little like, I'll make a little, little, little scarf. And I think it goes well with my hair and like eye color. So I, I do want that next to my face like this. So yeah, I don't know when I'll do that. I, I don't really need to wait too much because this is going to be lovely to work on in summer. So I'm keeping that one handy. And, and I really, really liked their other bases on the fingering and DK, the, the very luxurious alpaca silk cashmere. They had a beautiful gradient of blues, and blue is my favorite color. And then they had some really nice copper, gold, bronze colors. I'll put a photo of like the bronze color that I think I really, really liked. But once again, because it was going to be a big purchase, I just, I wasn't like 100% sure of what I would have wanted to make with that quantity so i'm just keeping in mind those bases and the colors that i like crushed on and i'll visit their websites in the future or look for them at future events now that i know that i like this i'm just going to meditate on it and think more about it which hopefully is something that you can do when you go to yarn festivals is obviously you do your first round where you go around you really don't need to buy anything right there and then like i think it's better to make sure you visit every vendor first before buying anything and then you can do your second round or third round and then you can buy at the end of the event once you have a bigger sense and you've had time to think about things. What people do a lot is like they go for lunch and like talk to their friends and get opinions like on, on what they want their purchases to be. 
But then what you can also do is not even buy on the day and buy much later, like what I'm going to do here with those two shops I've mentioned, where because the purchase is going to be bigger in like money and size and time of fingering weight sweater or knitting, I want to make sure I have the perfect pattern for it, even though I had some ideas and inklings today. The next mention I want to do is woolen flower. And I don't really have too, too much to say in terms of like, there's nothing like usually special about them. They just had really, really, really nice colors of hand dyed. So it's something that, again, I didn't really have any specific idea or like vision for any of their yarn. So I didn't buy any, but I really want to make sure that I prepare a couple of ideas that maybe next time I see them at a yarn festival, I get something from, from their brand. And then the next one is Whistle Bear. And uh, they've actually got a, a farm. And this is, uh, they're based in Northumberland, which is in England. And it's just a little, it's a county that's just next to the borders where this festival was. And the very special thing about this place is that they had no nylon sock yarn. And the interesting thing as well is that the no nylon sock yarn was of a certain fiber blend. They had also that same fiber blend, but not for socks. And the difference then is that it was plied or twisted differently. So for a sock yarn, you want it to be very high twist so that it has less propensity to pill and it's sturdier and stronger because you're trying to make up for the fact it doesn't have any nylon or silk or anything. Whereas if you're just doing a four ply for a sweater or a shawl, it doesn't matter that it's twisted as tightly. So um, those were sold as different items, like in the, the shelf, it was separated. So I got the sock yarn and I got this lovely green springy color. I was really attracted to their green selection. Um, that's quite hard to choose. There was another kind of olive one. There was one that was like chartreuse, pale, yellow like which normally i would never go for but i was so attracted to it but i decided it wouldn't maybe be the best for socks like i was maybe hoping for something brighter like less pale so that's why i got this one and also my boyfriend like i asked him for advice and he said that he preferred that one so i got that one so this is um this is made of 80 percent whistle bear's own mohair and 20 percent whistle bear's own wensleydale wool so it's Wensleydale and mohair that is coming from their very own farm, which is great. They get it spun somewhere else and then they dye it themselves. So this is 300 meters, 130 grams. So I guess not the classic 100 gram sock yarn. I was also told that with this kind of thicker type yarn, it was a lovely viewer actually who told me this at the festival. Uh, we had a chat. She said that um, normally we both tend to do our socks on two millimeter because we like socks to be very tight and like the tension to be tight. But with this, it's okay if we go up a needle size, so like 225 maybe. So I'll keep that in mind when I'm using this for socks to maybe not go too, too low on the needle size. Actually, yeah, here it says like three millimeter needles is recommended, but I wouldn't want to do my socks on such big needles. And I'm really excited to try this as a no nylon sock, first of all, because it's always good to experiment and like nylon is supposed to be bad for the environment. so. If I love it, I might switch to this, although like it's more pricey than the commercial nylon socks. The colors are beautiful and I'm curious to see if it's going to be like sensitive because I can tell it's kind of like, it's not itchy, but it's like not as soft as superwash merino nylon socks. And I've, I don't think I have very sensitive feet. Like I'm not the kind of person that hates textures on their feet or like bumps and lumps and like or even just wearing socks in general, like I'm quite happy. So I feel like there's no big risk. I'm, I'm probably gonna like having this on my feet. And if I don't, I can always wear a pair of like little shorty socks underneath, like store-bought ones, and then put that on top as like even warmer uh, layer. Uh, I think this is the color Hespool, by the way. So yeah, those, this will be some socks. Uh, something that I did actually, I think I said before going to the event is I laid down all my sock yarn or like most of my sock yarn to have an idea of what I already own. And I was trying to kind of fill the gaps, like to not buy something that I already had. I noticed that I've got quite a lot of neutrals, like whites and beiges for socks and blues. So it would be quite nice to get some green in the, in the sock yarn. So that's what I did. And then the last yarn purchase that I did was at the Ginger Twist Studio uh, little stall. 
like I said, I've bought from their real shop before while I was in Edinburgh because they had some they had some John Arvin sock yarn which I bought uh, last year. But they also have their very own yarn dyeing studio and they sell a lot of their own hand dyed in the shop in person. So definitely go check that out if you are wanting to get some hand dyed and you want to see it in person first. And what really attracted me to this yarn is that they had a lot of samples hanging out and as you do, you just start touching all of them. And then there's this top that they had knitted, the sleeveless top that I started touching and it felt amazing. It was so silky and airy and breezy and light and drapey, like it was amazing. And so I immediately look at the tag and I see that it was made of a base that had linen in it. So it's like linen and silk. So the yarn is made of alpaca, linen and silk, 50% alpaca, 25 linen, 25 silk. So then I immediately like ask uh, Jess, the vendor, and um, yeah, Kathleen. Uh, I was asking her like, oh, so can I get this base, blah, blah, blah. So, uh, and here's the color that really attracted me. So she showed me the cubicle that had all those bases. And you can see the color here, it's so perfect. Like I feel like this is totally my color, like a dirty green olive. <laughs> um, so yeah, and it's kind of shiny because of the linen and the silk. And I got two skines, so 800 meters in total. And I think I'm going to be making a Tenya by Caitlin Hunter. So I'll put a photo here of the pattern because I think that will be enough. The colorway is Factory Girls and it's just, it's just perfect. This is the one that I'm the happiest with of today, like the most excited to cast on. And again, it's a summer net. So I really hope I get to make this this year for this summer. That would be great. The other thing I bought was that there was a sort of like mill that was here, like factory mill, which was called Creation Mill. And they were like selling huge bins of like discounted yarns, cones, buttons, zippers. So I bought a zip just in case one day I decide to make like a zipper sweater sort of thing, just in that light color because I have some yarn that I'm kind of thinking of using for a zipper sweater that's like white. So anyway, got that zip. Even as well, like, because it was, it was really cheap. I think this was, like, a pound. So even if I use that as my tryout zip, and if I ever want to buy a zip that's, like, a prettier kind of, like, detail, then that will be my practice one. So, yeah. And I also got some buttons because they had this huge basket of buttons that was, like, two pounds for 50 grams. And the buttons were tiny, so like I bought so many small buttons, I just kept on putting them on the scale, and it, the scale was just like not going up at all, and I was like, oh my god, I'm gonna get like 10 cardigans worth of buttons. So I won't show you all the buttons, I think what I'll do is I'll put a b-roll of like me holding them in my hands or something, so that you can see the, the general gist. They're quite like blue and beiges, which is uh, nice, because I probably will do a lot of blue and beige cardigans. So that's really cool, and I've always said that I wanted to build my button stash, because I don't find shops that sell buttons very often. So yeah, that's that was my very first purchase actually um, of the entire event was buttons. Okay, so those were the shops that I really liked. There was another one that was the Border Mail. They sell alpaca rose and they had they have so many colors and they're so 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 gorgeous. Uh, they're being sold in I want to say 50 gram little skines. Yeah, I think 50 grams little skines. And they're really, really pretty. And they had some samples. They had a beanie and a cowl. And they were so floppy and drapey. Like, there was no... You know, it was not sturdy at all. It was just really floppy. So I think what I would want with that would be a cowl. So some like a little, like, nice little snuggly little thing. I would make sure not to make it too long and too saggy because then it wouldn't even touch my neck anymore. So like a, a really nice little cowl like that. But I need to find a pattern that I want. I think maybe something with two colors or three colors, like some kind of color work would be nice or just a unique color one with some kind of texture. So because I had no idea about cowls, I just didn't buy anything right there and then. So I'll make sure to research cowls before going to the next yarn festival and I'll make sure to buy something at the border mill like alpaca rose because like it's just so dreamy so yeah that's all I got and I'm really proud of myself like I didn't overdo it I didn't buy too much because I already bought a lot at my previous yarn festival and I have used half of what I bought last time so I'm making progress on my things I buy at yarn festivals but I think this is a good uh, a good 
day of purchasing and like I said, I'm keeping in mind those other two shops of the hand dyed to research it more thoroughly before like pressing the, the buy button. The next yarn festival that I'm thinking of going to then is Perth Festival of Yarn in September and then there will be the Glasgow School of Yarn in October. So I'll, I'll try and go to the, both of them, don't see any reason why not. And yeah, if you see me at those, then come and say hello. There were a few people that came and said hi to me today and it was a surreal experience. It was like so, so nice. Like someone called out Venetia and like said that they knew me from the podcast and we started talking. And it's just so weird that people know my name. Uh, so if that was you, thank you so much. You made my day. And it was so lovely to just like have a little chat and talk about like where they were from and if they got anything from the from the event. Like a couple of them told me that they came to the event because they had heard about it from like my channel. So I almost had this sense of like, oh, I really hope that you had a good time if you came because of me. But but they all said that they had a good time at the event. So uh, so that's nice. So if, if you see me at the next event, then totally come and talk to me and show me what you bought because I love being nosy and looking at people's purchases at yarn festivals, which is why I, I always watch those kind of vlog videos because I can't attend, especially events like over the globe. <laughs> so yeah, I had a fantastic day. I am absolutely shattered and tired. My face hurts from like smiling, talking and squinting. I had sunglasses on, but like, I still feel like the day was just so bright. It was the best day, the best, like people and surrounded by yarn and it wasn't too overwhelming like it was my second yarn festival and I remember feeling so overwhelmed in the first one it's definitely something that you kind of want to have a rough plan or like a rough idea of what you want to do like in my mind I know that if I buy two kinds of fingering weight I can make a t-shirt or a top like or a, a short sleeve three-quarter sleeve sweater so that's kind of always my backup. But I think this time I was also kind of tempted to buy some things to make tops, like camisoles, especially all the drapey alpaca silk ones. So I was not super prepared for that because I was thinking of all those possibilities of, of non-sweater items that I could make. And I guess scarves as well. But also it's fine just to go for like being a part of it. Like you don't need to go and buy things, especially if you're just collecting the little business cards for future reference, it's not a waste of a time. Like if you go and you have fun chatting about yarn, squishing things, having a like cup of coffee in the local town, then it's not a wasted day. So I think I'll stop talking now because I'm, I'm getting a bit rambly, but I highly recommend that festival if it's happening again next year. I highly recommend Gala Shields. We had a lovely time uh, walking around to the parks, chilling in the sun, getting ice cream, getting dinner, like there was a little market as well. So we probably want to go again, uh, either to the town or to the festival when it happens again. So I highly recommend that event, highly recommend the town. And yeah, I think I'm going to go to bed so early tonight. And maybe cast on that little alpaca scarf really soon because it's just so pretty and I have seen what it looks like on the little sample so I just want to recreate that. I want to have that fabric. Like I feel like this is the kind of stuff that I would even just want to make a swatch of just to own the swatch and, and play with the swatch. But I'll just make a scarf because why make a swatch? Let me know in the comments if you went to that festival by any chance or if you've been to any festivals and you resonated with that kind of sense of like overwhelm. How much do you have to plan? Like what do you tend to buy at those events? Do you just go for the social aspect of it? Do you like yarn festivals? Do you not see a point of them? Like, let's let's just chat. Let's keep chatting about yarn festivals and whether there are some in your country, because I know like the viewers here, there's like people from all over the globe, you've told me. So let me know if you go to any yarn events in your country and if you don't have any and you wish that you did, do you feel like it would be worth planning a trip to a country that has a yarn festival and like time that trip for that? Or... Is it not worth the hassle? I feel like if I were to go to America, I'd maybe want to go on one of those yarn festivals day, but I, I don't see myself planning a trip to America anytime soon. So maybe yarn events in France I could do. Anyway, 
yeah, have a wonderful rest of your time, of your day, and I'll see you all in the next podcast episode. Bye, happy knitting! <laughs>